Let no one despise the gift that's inside of you, whether that is family members, whether that is friends, whether though those are people who are most familiar with you. In fact, the Bible says that a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown, among his own family and his friends, basically with those who are familiar with you.com. So don't be discouraged. In fact, the Lord took me to 1 Samuel chapter um, 17 this week, and I want to focus on verse 28. This will be very quick. It says, when Eliab, David's older brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. Man, with enemies like this, who needs family, right? This is harsh. This is hard. This is tough, right? Because this is coming from his oldest brother. And we know that David was rejected. We know that David wasn't thought much of by his own father, because rejection is a part of the anointing. Come on, somebody receive this word. You see, when the prophet Samuel came, he didn't even recognize who God had called and chose until God had to speak into his spirit and said, not that one. He was looking at the outward appearance. He was looking at all of these brothers, Eliab and the rest who looked so stately and so kingly. They were older. They, by all appearances, appearances, look like they were the one but god kept speaking into samuel's ear is there another and we see david is about to be on the rise to elevation he is there not scared of the giants he is full of courage because to, the word of this freedom friday is how to live in boldness and courage and he goes before the king and he says who is this philistine who is this giant who is this uncircumcised unbelieving person who doesn't know the most how how dare he come up against the people of god send me in but i don't want to go in just on my own accord and i don't want to go in wearing your battle garments i gotta go in in the way god has trained me and i want to just take a second because the bible notes that eliab said that his heart that david's heart was wicked eliab said i know that you're conceited sometimes people look at you child of god and they say who you think you are oh you're so conceited you arrogant because they're judging on the outward and they're judging by appearances that they have no reason or understanding about but they're judging and he had the audacity to say that he had a wicked heart king david who god said was a man after his own heart here he is about to find himself in opposition with the will of god be careful that you don't find yourself in opposition with the word and the will of god because you're looking at people by outward appearances and saying oh how conceited how arrogant they are Touch not the anointed of God. Touch not his prophets. Do them no harm. This is a real statement, you all. And people begin to fall in the snares of their own traps because they will not heed to biblical advice, warnings. But I want to tell you, David's about to show up and show out. It said in verse 34, but David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. Man, talk about a man who knows God. You see, when he was out there busy slaying bears and lions and his brothers just thought he was just, you know, taking care of a few sheep. They thought that what he was doing was small, but because God, because God saw that David was faithful with the few, faithful with the small. He said, 
I'm going to bless you with more because I can see that you are disciplined. I can see that you're diligent. I can see that you have worshipped me behind closed doors. You are out there winning battles in private, but now it's time because you're ready for the spotlight. His brother hated him because really those brothers knew the gift that God put in date. All right, y'all, the phone got so hot up in my car that it just shut down, honey, because the word is fire, right? But let me just tell you, they knew the gift that was inside David. In fact, in verse 29, David says, what have I done? Is there not a cause? David says, I'm here to help. Is there not a reason nobody else is willing to stand up against this giant? Everybody else is scared, but I will. I will stand up to this uncircumcised Philistine. I'll go out there. I'm prepared. I have the confidence that the Lord has given me that I can take this giant. So what are you complaining about? Why are you hating me for wanting to step up to do a job that you are not even willing to do? My Lord, isn't it like most people who are constantly criticizing and have a critical eye, they're over there, you know, pointing out the flaws in the person that's actually doing the work? Isn't that just like a hater, right? But glory be to God, David was going to be the one that was going to catapult his family to a new level. Oh, little David, who everybody rejected, would be the one that would cause celebration. Oh, little David, who everybody looked down on, would be the one that all of a sudden everybody's going to want to know. Hey, isn't that about you guys? Isn't that like a child of God? When you're arising to the spotlight, people that discounted you, people that didn't support you, it's all right because... Of course, they're going to come back and say, remember when I knew them, I knew, well, you should, what, where was the support? Where was the encouragement? That's all right. The haters were used to promote David right on to his spot of elevation because he was going to do what they couldn't do, praise God. And they were going to be there to witness him slay the giant. Let's keep going. And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard, which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered him, delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by its beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. Go on, David. David said, this is going to be small change to me. God has been preparing me in the battlefield. I've come up against lions and bears with sharp razor blade teeth. What is this Philistine? What is this giant? This will be nothing in the hands of a living God who has got my back. Because if God be for you, it doesn't matter if your brother's against you, your family, your friends, whosoever it may be, if God be for you, no one can stand against the living armies of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is so beautiful. He's so confident because he knows the God in whom he serves. And so shall it be for us children of God, because we know in whom we believe. We believe the report of the Lord. We walk in the promises of God. There is no obstacle. There is no challenge. There is no serpent, no adder. There is no lion that we will not trample over in victory because of the power that lives inside of us. So I just wanted to deliver this word today because the Lord brought me here a few days ago and he kept putting it in my spirit to release this word and I wouldn't be settled until I released it. And now I'm like, all right, God, I did it because we are preparing. Remember, June is a month of clarity, sitting at the feet of God, 
getting instructions because come July, baby, we are running with the horses. And ain't no giant, ain't no mountain gonna stop what God has called us to arise and conquer. All right, I love you to life. That is the word of the day. Be encouraged and uh, walk in confidence, just like David, knowing the God that you serve is able. Hallelujah, hallelujah.